Welcome back. This is still Tea Time Special and we are all geared up in the spirit of the month of March which celebrates women massively. We have another set of amazing women joining us in the studio to discuss our women issues as it affects us. Sally Kenedazi and Adderonke Adefalujo. Sally is a renowned writer, blogger, author and a feminist while Adderonke is an astute businesswoman, fashion entrepreneur, award-winning fashion influencer and head girl at Ronke Fella Collections brand. Thank it you for being here. Having you guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Okay, yeah. so you guys look stunning. I of hope course. you're ready to of course. do this conversation. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, so we'll just dive straight into it so we have mm -hmm. enough time. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about prostitution. Uh, there's a quote that I really love that speaks about this, and it says, prostitution is inherently Im is not inherently immoral, any more than running a company like Aaron, in layman terms, a company that pollutes and damages the planet. It is not inherently immoral. It is how you do it that counts. And the reality is that it's going to happen anyway. It is not called the world's oldest profession for nothing. Mm -hmm. Why not make it, at the very best, safe and productive? And this is by Janet Angle. She is a renowned sex and sex-related worker and staff. So I want you guys to talk about that because morality, for some reason, lays as the foundation of how conversations surrounding sexuality and monetization of sexuality takes place. It is one of those topics that rarely have participants who sit in the middle what we see often are extreme ideologies. We know it as a female-dominated industry, of course, but it would make, we want to find out why that is, right? It is stemming from the deep-rooted patriarchal condition of inherent humans. We either hate it or we love it, or we support it or we abolish it. <laughs> so what do we do? Is that how, is that how it is and is, that, is it ever gonna go away? So let's talk about it. As women in the industry, all forced, we could all be truly willing and or we could do both. So. Let's, let, let's see what you guys think about that. Let me just go first in launching this thing. Okay, <laughs> I would gladly want you to go first. <laughs> so I, for one, I'm born into a generation that is free in terms of sexuality. We're allowed to choose who we love, choose who we F, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, we are not really conditioned. I mean, I might, as teenagers, we're wearing ripped jeans and thin, um, you know, linings or whatever, which never used to happen before. So there's a very different um, mindset for younger generations. I, for one, believe that a woman and women are allowed to freely express themselves. Now, my only worry is that this industry, let me call it an industry, exists because of a subtle, almost invisible conditioning that we are supposed to be objectified. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that it's female dominated makes me wonder that then it's not a human EM playing field thing. Mm -hmm. Because if it was, men should also be willing to do that. Mm -hmm. But it exists. And do you think that we need to promote and support the safety of these women, or should we just abolish it completely? Sorry, um, to clarify something, men should be willing to do what? <laughs> I'm saying that if this thing was a human thing, right? Like everybody just, they're selling themselves Self for sex. Thing. Okay. If this thing was a human thing, we should have men participating men in this. Men do it. That's in why the I same, have to say. No, in the same capacity <laughs> now. In the same capacity. Okay. It's like 1% to 90%. It's not balanced, yes. do, actually. So okay. is it that we're doing this because we have been conditioned and that's just the way life works, that we have this ability to sex our, um, sell ourselves as sex objects and that's why we do it? Or is it just inherently natural for women and that's why we just choose to happen to want to sell it mm. okay for me i think <laughs> so many things that people hold to their chest i want to kill themselves on right it doesn't really bother me i think i'm just that my mind is just focused on how whatever it is makes me feel and makes me happy right mm -hmm. so, so, one, so one thing about objectifying as well i get that you're looking at it from um, the economical angle now and the general broad a broader view but for me i'm just going to narrow it down for myself and my space and how it works so i have realized that when it comes to objectifying or you saying this guy is just looking at me for sex gains we get offended when we're not really interested in that um, person or the position or we feel it doesn't work for us that way but for me personally I've learned to take everything including my limitations and my struggles as my privilege so um, it, you might be uncomfortable with someone saying um, you look a certain way but for me if that was my aim and that was how I wanted to look or if I know that there is a privilege in that look I don't mind exploring that privilege right. and after exploring that privilege then I can now decide to use my voice thankfully we talked about the voice that women have and the power we have actually now use my voice to create a playing field for people who feel that they do not want to be objectified right. so this is how I look at it I, I, if I walk into a place you don't need to tell me that I'm 
beautiful or I am sexy. I mean, I know it already. I look into the mirror yes, and girl. I know it. Tell and me. I do not feel some type of way when I get that. Right. You know, so that's basically where I come okay, from. Okay, but let me just make it even a lot more personal. Mm -hmm. I'm, you walk into a bank, I'm a, you know, a MD or whatever, and I touch your back and I say, hi, beautiful. That's, that's already that's physical. Touching. Yeah, I'm so touching. Yeah, physical. Mm -hmm. physical. <laughs> don't, don't touch. Okay. <laughs> just say. Okay, so you have... Right. Have a conversation. But then what do you think, Elsie, about me selling myself for sex? It's my part-time job. As in, after tea time, you know, I do, my, I do my thing. I think it's a personal decision. And I like how you said that we need to start discussing safe, safety measures and um, doing it the right way to avoid having various diseases that are flying everywhere. Now, yeah. I don't even know if, if it's just sexual diseases that you're supposed to be worried about now or viruses, right? But I think there needs to be measures to protect these people. But I don't think they need to be judged. Right. Sometimes if you feel like, even if you feel like what you're doing isn't right, maybe you need to have a conversation with this person to know where exactly she is coming from and why that is the option that they chose to go with. Okay, let me take you to the guest now. Do you think it is perverted to indulge in this industry of sex selling? So your brother or your son or whoever goes to sex workers for, you know... Are you going first? Oh, I should. Oh, you should. <laughs> so, um... Um... A little bit, I won't say I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm traditionally, um, or, what am I going to put it? I'm, 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 tra I'm a little bit traditional. Mm -hmm. right. And I'm a Christian, and I believe in my Bible. Morally, I do not support it, because I don't do it. And like um, the quote you said, um, prostitution is a... The, the person said it's like the oldest profession, you understand. Now, women being objectified, it has always happened since time memorial. Mm. Thank God we're beginning to talk about it now and we are beginning to let the world know we are not an object. However, I personally, I do not support um, a woman selling her body for money because I feel I know we are much more than that. They say what a man can do, a woman can do better. God created us both equally, in my opinion. They have hands, we have hands. I have brain to think. I have hands to work. So what, which money do they want to give me to put down my body, the temple of Christ? Mm. If I want to do, let me know I am doing because I want to do. And there is a mutual benefit of enjoyment. Okay. But to get money, how much does he want to give me? Because I like, my, I like the mutual benefit. Of yes. Money, but let's because, get sorry, because my body mm -hmm. is of great value right, to me. Yeah. Now, I am not judging any, every, anyone because mm. you know what? We cannot be the same thing. Yeah. And our environment, our upbringing is very different. Mm -hmm. However, if I'm, if I'm in a position to advise, I would say... Against it. Too. Yes, yeah. I'm against it. Okay. My thoughts. <laughs> um, okay, so um, the issue of objectification, I think it stems from the facts that, as you said, women's bodies have always been looked as sex objects and so there's that thin line you know um like i wrote something on facebook um the v i don't know i don't think i'm able to use that word <laughs> yeah. here the v okay. okay the vagina cannot buy money money buys the vagina right. it doesn't matter how premium it is when it comes to money and exchange money always tops it so you, you have the scenarios where they make people feel like, oh, you have the premium. At the end of the day, it is what it is. But having said that, I feel it should be legalized. I heard it is legalized. Pimping places. is not. Yeah. I feel like it should, there should be laws that back it up to protect women. I have right. a friend who works with the TSS. He told me, Sally, if I tell you, how many dead bodies of women mm -hmm. we find in hotels and in places 
just because of prostitution. It doesn't yeah. get to the media. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. They won't put it. So, as in, I, I want, I wish we could have protection for these women yeah. because no yeah. matter, like she said, you can't, we're not all the same. Yeah. Yeah. So People go into it for different reasons, reasons. especially in this economy yeah. of ours. Which is why I said you need to sit down with them to understand mm -hmm. that. And exactly. And that's, one, that's you another it? thing that, maybe it's just because it's Nigeria and I understand that, but mm -hmm. like a place like Australia where I've lived in, a lot of the people that I've spoken to that are in that industry are not actually moved by money. Mm -hmm. They love it. They are sexually driven and they enjoy okay. the connection. Mm -hmm. They actually see it as a calling that there's a lot of men who wow. don't have the space to have a conversation about sex mm -hmm. or their fantasies. Mm -hmm. So they come to them and fulfill that fantasy and they feel like they're doing Amazing. a service for the humanity. Hum yeah. humanity yeah. So take a look at that. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, sorry, one more thing. I, I think we always keep focusing on the women. You know, like I remember Fowls came on that oh, big fire. Yes. Like you're always talking about prostitution. How about the Who's men? Buying it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, who is buying it? Yeah. You know, we're always concentrating. So if there's no customer, yeah, there will be no supply product. and demand. <laughs> that is economic. It's yeah. always so we can't. This is not. This is your. We can't keep hanging onto the moral mm. aspect of it when men keep demanding. demanding. As long as there's demand, it, there's going. There's to be always supply. going to be supply. Yeah. yeah. I but feel like anybody who went to school know that quote from economics, even if yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's okay. But yeah, I understand that the religion, from the religious perspective. Mm -hmm. And I also just worry, I've t like I said, I had a lot of friends that I spoke to that did that. And each and every one of them, the one thing that was common was that their effects experience was ugly. That they cried or they didn't appreciate it because a lot of them went into it for... You know, because we're forced. Mm -hmm. um, you know, either an auntie is, is, or... Is it same for the Australian people who do it for the calling? Yes. So oh, what wow. I'm saying is that okay. it evolved into that. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the interesting part that, that I've experienced. So I, I always wonder that, is it actually a good thing in itself to expose yourself to and go through that trauma? But when they weigh it, this, now this is not me, and I, don't, it's, I guess it's not my headache, but when they weigh it, it's worth it. The mm -hmm. first experience in comparison to the level of fulfillment that they, feel, that they have now, they, they weigh it out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important not to then use your moral compass, religion, whatever it is that, you're using, that you have, to then cripple the safety. And that's one of the issues that we have in terms of legalizing this thing in the industry. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. it's a part of our culture, it's a part of our religion, but it's going to happen and we need to make, keep them safe. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go on a very short break, but when we come back, um, Runke will tell us what she's got for us. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Minimal are you? Mm. music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? Sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back, guys. So, we're discussing family. Sometimes being genetically related isn't what makes you family. Love, support, trust, sacrifice, honesty, protection, acceptance, security, gratitude, respect, and loyalty is what makes you family. Um, that quote was by an, by an anonymous, but I'm sure we all understand what I'm trying yes, to say. So yes. for someone like me, I am family oriented. Mm -hmm. So I lost my mom almost a year ago, and I've had to step into the shoes of being a mom and a yeah. wife to my dad and then a mom to my younger one. Mm -hmm. So I know family is really important. But however, family is not just blood related. Mm -hmm. Those people who stood by me at my trying times when I lost my mom, they are family to me yeah. now because they saw me at my best and also saw me at my worst and they decided to stay. And this is what I always say to people. If you, because family is all about love too. If you truly love people, make sure you show it. Don't just tell them. It's right. easy to say, I love you, I love you. Show it, be there for them in good time, in bad times. When they are alone, 
and they reflect and say, ha, who are these people that love me? Let, let it be that. You come into their mind and they can remember one or two, three times you were able to sacrifice. If, there is, if you say you love and there is no sacrifice, then there is not love. Just to build on that, mm -hmm. you, use a lot of, you use love a lot, yeah. right? And there's different ways that we find love as a woman. So mm -hmm. either from family, like the family mm -hmm. we were born into, mm -hmm. the family that we've created with our lover, mm -hmm. and then friendship family. So you can have friends, girlfriends yes. that you love. Now, do you think that we need to prioritize those three? Like have them one, two, three? Or do they all work simultaneously? Or like, what would you say to prioritize in terms of those three aspects? I feel like they work simultaneously. Right. What, what am I prioritizing? God, the love is different. Agape love, the love you have with your partner is different from the one you have for your sister. Mm. So it all works hand in hand. Well, because we see, we see people who, like there's a lot of conversations that happen around women mm. where we, we see women say, oh, I entered a relationship and I'm now, I'm now I'm not friends with my girlfriends <laughs> yeah. okay. anymore. Mm. Or I've entered, um, I have a, a, a... I'm now married, I don't deal with single. You understand? Single. So yeah, it's, it, it seems like, it's you know. It's simply ignorance mm. because that marriage, you see, I, I, I personally, do not see marriage as um, what do they call it as an achievement right. it's part of life even the Bible said it it's not it's not by force for you to marry mm. you understand so if you now think you have gotten married and you have achieved so much the marriage can end in few months mm. so that friend you dumped or you looked that on you will run back to her because <laughs> you need a shoulder to lean on mm -hmm. so it works hand in hand so you have so to find a balance you just have to find yeah. the balance so thinking that because you you're married and then you're going to ditch your friends or you're married and you ditch your family mm. it doesn't work that way mm. you know we should just find a way to balance everything we need everybody at certain times okay i wanted to just touch on that and then mm. take us to the next segment yeah, I'm more interested in that I'm married now and I cannot, mm. just, just like she was talking about. I think it's ridiculous. And I'm not going to blame just the married women. I blame the singles. Like, I saw somebody on Facebook, she's like, oh, I can't understand, I can't handle um, married people. I can't be in their space. And I'm like, we like labels, we like all these mm. things. We're just human beings. I mean, your friend, unless your friend physically changed mm. or... In emotionally changed towards you when they got married. I mean, I don't see any reason why you, sh you guys shouldn't connect. And I don't see why you should, you know, dump your right. friendship because yeah. you now have a ring, a ring mm -hmm. on your finger. Okay. Next segment. <laughs> okay, so right now um, we'll be talking about body positivity, women's health. So real women are fat and thin and both and neither and otherwise. This was said by Honey Blank. One of the most important and serious conversations a woman would have with herself as she gets older would be about her body and her health. So biologically, a lot of changes happen on the inside, from the onset of menstruation to menopause. In between, hormonal changes occur that can affect our physical, mental, and emotional states. A good number of women struggle with body image issues and they're ill-informed on ways to cope with their special needs. But the good thing is that we have enough information in our hands today and brave young women out there who are not ashamed of their femininity and are breaking the code of silence. Sure. They are open and honest about these issues and are willing to help other women out there with similar struggles. I'm always happy to be part of these discussions that inspire women and let them know that they can be comfortable in their own skin. Mm. So yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot happens from the time, time you start seeing your period to even after menopause. Like, mm. a lot of stuff happens where you get pregnant. And then there's so many things happening. Like, in between, you, you could have PCOS. It's something so, I'm struggling with. What in is this PCOS? Day, you want to answer that? Hmm? What is PCOS? PCOS? Okay, it's polycystic mm. ovarian syndrome. Mm. It's a situation where your ovaries are producing more male hormones than right. female hormones. And long term, it could affect your health. Right. You could get diabetic or have heart issues. So the problem is 70% of women don't know that they, they have, have it. it. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So in this um, age of cosmetic surgery and being able to modify your look, how do women begin to understand and appreciate themselves as I mean, like you said, you can be thin, you can be fat, you mm -hmm. can be, and sometimes the condition you live with or the condition that has come to your body just by being a woman mm. determines how you look. Yeah. So how do we begin to understand that we need to love ourselves the just the way we are? The way we are. Oh, it's, it's a difficult struggle. Like for mm. me, 
going through PCOS. Um, it used to be so easy for me to work out mm. and keep my weight, but from last year, I started having issues with dropping the weight, and I didn't know until I went to the hospital. So like you said, some people have issues inside mm. of them, but generally, whether you have your health or whatever it is, it starts from here. You mm. have to accept yourself. I have to bring it to you because you're into fashion. Yeah. Yes. And it's it can be a good tool to tackle that. Um, mm -hmm. But do you think that it is more of a positive tool to tackle that or do people now just hide behind fashion with the, with the issues that they have? Well, um, firstly, I'd say you can't buy confidence. Mm. Even if you do your body, it's not guaranteed that you'll still be confident. So it has to come from inside, like yeah. she has said. However, and funny enough, I do fashion for plus size women. So I create designs that, you know, covers insecurities, you understand. Now fat, you fat, you know, keep it safe. <laughs> so as long as it doesn't affect your health, mm. I'm just, when it comes to weight, it's all about your health. If you're healthy, just do you. Mm -hmm. If you want to eat, eat. If you want to work out, work out. If you want to exercise, you know, just do you. Now we have clothes. That's why there is peplum. Mm. Uh, you have the peplum top, double peplum to cover okay. the belly. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as long as you're healthy, it's fine. It, you don't necessarily have to lose weight and you don't necessarily have to add weight. It, it just all depends on you. So like I said, I always tell my people, my sisters, everyone, you have to accept yourself for just you one last question. Obviously, there's a lot that changes mm -hmm. about women. Um, and it's not just for people who are plus size or mm -hmm. skinny or tall or short. Everyone has an issue that they're dealing with. Exactly. From self-acceptance to societal so expectations. Yes. But how do, you, how do we manage, and really quickly, because time is going, how do we mm -hmm. manage that in terms of interacting with the world? So I'm small, how do I interact with the world? I'm dark skin, I'm chubby, I'm a mom, I have belly fat, I have, you know, all those type of stuff. What's that one thing you can advise to women for? Whatever issues that they're going through to deal with that societally? Interact with the world anyhow you want to interact with the world because every other person out there have their own insecurity yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. So don't, you know, just be yourself right. and appreciate yourself. That's it. To me, just own the space you're in. Like, everybody has their own space. Own it. I'm small. I'm going to own this small. Mm -hmm. That nobody will ever see this kind of small before. I'm plus size. I'm going to own plus size. Now me get some. I'm <laughs> yellow CC. Like, yeah. LC uses it now. So, like, own your space. And people would look at you the way you want them to look at you. Perfect. Okay, so that's how we wrap up, and I think that's an amazing way to wrap up. Thank you, ladies, for Thank being you. here. Thank you, Ife Omai, for doing this as well. And um, this is how we wrap up this special episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching, and you can catch up on all this conversation and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, La Plus TV Africa. Also, you can watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, has gone to my co anchor and the entire production team. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin. See you later.